why is it, I ask myself, why is it that if these are, things are true, if death has been defeated, if sin has been defeated, if my freedom is found in Christ, why do I often, and why do many of us as believers, particularly those in churchianity, uh, if you wonder what that is, listen to my message last week, why do so many of us still live as if we are in bondage? Why do we not actually live as free people? There's studies that have been done that people who have spent a majority of time in prison, uh, when they get released, if they spent a, a huge portion of their lives in prison, uh, they do one of two things. First is they break the law intentionally so that they can go back into the only thing that they've known, which was living the life where uh, it, slavery, essentially, where everything's taken care of you. That's one. The second thing that a majority of them do is they commit suicide because they can't handle this new life, so they, they just end it. Unfortunately, they do not know what to do with this newfound freedom that they have. I'm like, man, why do I do the same thing as a Christian? Can you relate to that? Can, can you relate to that? If everything I just said is true, do you, do you believe, if you don't believe everything that I just said, then we have another problem. Um, but if you believe based upon the word of God that, that I impact, if you believe those things are true, then why do we not often live as if they are? What holds us back? We often don't live as the free people that we are, that are free in Christ. I, I think there's, there's many reasons we can explain it. Um, I'm going to explain one thing, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make one final point for us, and I hope it packs home, and, and I hope we'll leave here today with a passion to focus on the renewing of our mind of being transformed by the renewal of our mind. I believe that one of the biggest things that holds us into bondage is our thinking. And the patterns in our lives that we have established in our brain that we've been trained by the old man, our remaining flesh has been trained by the old man before Christ. And we often do things uh, now that we don't even realize it. Um, it's really, really fascinating when we think about it. Um, in fact, there's something called neuroplasticity when you look at the brain and actually the physical brain. Now think of what I'm about to tell you in light of Paul talks about that our battle is with the remaining flesh. Like literally our physical brain, uh, it, it, it changes and it shapes based upon the things that we do. Um, and neuroplasticity is basically as you consider your, your brain and consider as a power grid that every time we think, feel, and act, it sends these signals all over, right? It sends them all over. And then when we do the same, same patterns, just as this one's wider, it literally makes like these wider pathways in our brains in which we settle in and do things and settle into certain patterns of life and ways of life um, that we don't even realize, right? Or when we, when, when there's, um, kind of new ideas and new habits that are similar to old ones, it's easy for us in our minds to go down that path. This all makes sense in just a moment. So whenever we want to do something new, we literally, like literally in our brain, we have to change those patterns and those pathways that go. And, and to establish new patterns and new ways of thinking, we want to make these go wider and wider and wider until they become new ways of life for us. And I firmly believe that we don't realize that much of the reason why we do not live in the power of the resurrection, that we do not walk in the newness of life, is that our brain has been trained by our old man. And we have so much sin and bondage and things in our past that we don't even realize uh, there, there's been abuse and there's been habits, there's been all of these things, and we've trained our minds to act and think in a certain way and to think in ways that are comfortable, and we settle into old ways of doing things, literally because our, our, our brains have been trained to do so. And I wonder if this adds new meaning when we think about it, when the Word of God says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That by the testing you may discern what is the will 
of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. We often don't live in the power of the resurrection because we're just doing what our remaining flesh tells us to do, primarily the patterns in our brain. And this is so important. That's why our thinking is so important. And that is why we have trained a generation of believers to continue to walk defeated because we haven't trained the mind at all. We've just said, well, life's complicated. There's a lot of questions that I don't know answers to, so just believe in Jesus. And say, okay, I believe in Jesus, but I'm going to go live my life just like nothing's ever changed before. We have to focus on changing our minds, guys. And this is not easy, is it? Our old man has trained our minds to be addicted to things like pornography and drugs and alcohol. And, and it actually releases um, uh, chemicals in our brain that, that bring us comfort in Christ, we have the same power to defeat that, though, don't we? Because it's the power that, that brought Jesus back to life. It's, it's significant, and our minds are a terrible thing to waste, guys. So as we reflect upon this, and I kind of wrap it up and, and, and saying, I believe that is the biggest thing that causes us to continue to walk as if we are enslaved, um, is... We don't transform our minds. We believe in a mystical Christianity, right? But the word of God needs, to, if the word of God is not challenging our presuppositions on a regular basis, we are probably walking in old patterns that we don't even realize. So as a result of this, I, I want to I ask you just a few things. I want you to think about this and reflect upon this. In light of this, what are you feeding your mind with that you should stop feeding your mind with? Understand it has consequences. Uh, I'll just give you a hit right now, the news. Um, shut that stuff off, man. <laughs> Minimize it. I I've been guilty of that. Like, you will go crazy. Shut it off. An interesting thing uh, that, that I, uh, I was watching a, a teaching video recently, and they were talking about when the TV was invented. It was concluded, it was in 1939 that this was introduced, and it was concluded, everyone said, that as the TV was invented, that um, it will never pass, surpass radio. Because what family actually has time to sit down together in front of a box for hours on end? Just think about that. Yeah, so what, what, what can we stop feeding our minds with? And the second thing is, what new habits will you start to develop in order to renew your mind? This, this is so significant. We will not live and walk dominion-oriented lives until we develop new habits that actually retrain our, our minds, our remaining, that's our remaining flesh, guys. Do not actually retrain our minds. Create new pathways. Like, that's literally part of the work that, that we are called to do. So I encourage everyone just to think on that and reflect upon that. Discuss it and say, I want to live in the power of the resurrection. If I'm a Christian, these things are true. Now, how do I grow as a Christian? How do I live in this way? How do I live in the power of the resurrection? Two things you can do right now. Ask yourself, what am I feeding my mind with? And what new habits do I need to develop?